Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I am back for my little check-in after day two of Fleur Woods Art Retreat here in lovely Robertson, although I'm joining you just down the road from Burrowing, complete with the chorus of beautiful birds and these lovely grasses swinging gently in the afternoon breeze and the dappled sun. It's just so beautiful, so I thought I'd take you down into the garden first. Um, and I want to show you some lichen on trees because that's provided some inspiration today as I have been stitching and working on one of my pieces. It's a bit of nice nature to, to start our little time together. I just love this, love this garden. It's so, so relaxing. It's yeah, so much fun for Travis. He's just out for a walk with Alex at the moment. I had a lovely play with him in the yard when I got home. So let's head first of all up to this tree over here because it's got some most fabulous lichen and um, little grassy bits on it. So I thought you might like to have a look at the textures, nature's textures as well as, as, well as me. And this will provide a great little reference as I'm working further into my, my piece that I've been focusing on today. I just love the little colonies of the little grasses and the lichens and just all the subtle changes in colours and, and textures. Look at this little little clump here, it's just fabulous. And these little lichens growing out. More beautiful little tufts. So I'm going to have to try and recreate these, these little ones. But yeah, it's just covered, covered with its lichens. And then there's more down on the tree down here. So we'll head down here. Don't worry, I'm going to um, show you where I'm up to on my, on my works and brainstorm a few further ideas for tomorrow with you. It's very relaxing and that we just work at our, our own pace, which is pure delight. Um, this morning we, for those of us that wanted to, here's Travis. Travis would like to be on the video it seems. <laughs> Travis has just come back from his walk and he's very excited. Excited that mum's around and excited that we're having a bit of an explore of the garden together. So yeah, some more beautiful textures here. Um, as I was mentioning before Travis joined us that we started our day for those that wanted to with a walk um, at the Karinga um, Falls, an amazing waterfall. They really do waterfalls very well in this part of the world. They're just incredible um, steep, steep drops. Um, Rachel was feeling quite sort of, um, yeah, a little bit queasy with the, the drop away beneath us, but yeah, it was just lovely to look at nature and we saw lots of mosses and fungi and, and other things. So there's just so much inspiration around us when we just sort of stop to, stop to look even down the bottom of the tree here beautiful little colonies of moss and lichens little colonies of ants as well a mass colony of ants in fact <laughs> and here's Travis not an ant and not a moss and not a lichen and there's Alex as well <laughs> and Travis is eating a branch and someone's coming coming in with their right on mower so I'll take you up onto the deck and we can pop you in my frame and we can have a look at the pieces that I've been creating today. So I've got my nice little little afternoon beer. I'm feeling good again so having a little bit of beer. I think my digestive issues post the kidney stone have sorted themselves out which is great. So I might just bit of an angle so I can better see what I'm showing you. So this is the one that I have worked on particularly today but um, the difference from yesterday is when you saw it yesterday these pieces were all on the monk's cloth which is what we did the punch needling into um, because I wanted to create four separate pieces because I'm really wanting to use this week um, to experiment and really um, just kind of yeah try try different different things. Um, I wanted to have yeah, multiple pieces. Some people are creating a large piece where all their bits join together. 
um, and doing amazing things between them but I really wanted to just experiment at this stage I'll definitely probably end up doing um, some large pieces as well but I thought this size would be um, a really good size just to be able to play with and because we're going to be later in the week I don't know whether it'll be tomorrow or on other days um, starting to color up the pieces um, with paints if we want to um, I thought it'd be great because I want to have one that's a forest floor or sort of tree um, what you basically see um, down when you get down down low in rainforests and other places which is this one which will probably have sort of greens greens on it of various tones um, and then one of them I thought I'll keep quite neutral one of them I want to make as a rock pool but make it quite colorful I think and then one of them I want to make as a rock pool but keep it more um, subtle more pastel in its tone so that's why I've gone for the four pieces these two I'm pretty sure are going to become my little rock pool pieces and yeah this one as the the neutral neutral piece so um, but let's just have a look at this one today um, so what I did when um, I had finished my punch needling was um, I cut out the pieces and this was at the instruction of Fleur um, and then backed the pieces with and this is just an old wool blanket um, that Fleur's brought over from New Zealand it's actually lovely it's got some of her black Labrador George's um, fur embedded in it so that's that's extra extra sweet um, and so yeah that's been now so the monk's cloth got folded underneath um, the wool and now I've got this incredible um, sort of yeah textured um, the piece is textured but it's also got that sort of undulation um, and the great thing when you get it to this point and I've done that on all the other pieces as well including in some cases I've left a little bit more bulk with the backing piece um, so it's almost sort of yeah concave concave no convex I think bulging out at both the front and the, the back but the great thing is when you get it to this point and get it out of the frame is you can start to see where you've got little gaps and they're the gaps that you can then start to um, nestle other things into or you might want to do some thread um, weaving or add some other um, textures or, or fabrics so you can start to have a look at where you've got those little um, valleys between the piece um, and start to nestle things in because it, at first when you look at it you think oh no it's all punch needled all over I won't be able to kind of fit anything in but there's lots of little spots where um, because when we did the original punch needling we were only filling in some areas within our within our shapes even though it started to look like it was filling everything out there's definite definite valleys and areas that can be played with but even as you can see in this piece I've embedded um, little rock sort of type beads in here um, I've added in um, these this interesting I think it was just like a fringing edging so I've unwound some of that fringing here and I'm thinking that will get sort of wound up over this textural piece um, which was wool round wound around um, ropes so I'm just having such a lovely time with textures um, little fluffy bits I just love love my little toadstools um, Annie Claxton I'm thinking of you and also Jackie um, oh no and um, no Annie and Sue who've been particularly having um, fun or Susie Q with with toadstools um, but I think some others have as well I'm sure by now I haven't had much time to catch up on videos of late um, but yeah toadstools and little mushrooms I love them um, and just yeah just love that these can be moved moved around as well um, but this one yeah I'm pretty sure I'll end up painting this one greens it's got another little um, which I just use some um, some un sort of unspun wool and then just encased it in a little scrap of doily I've got a lovely little netty sort of bit down here um, sitting over that and I'm thinking because um, the other thing I, that we did or that I did this morning a few folks had done it yesterday some people are yet still to do it um, was we got some air drying clay in our packs and so making all sorts of lovely shapes and I think I might eventually put one of those shapes um, or a couple of them interspersed amongst this net so I've just left it partially stitched on for now um, and I'm thinking I'll also now start embedding some other other beads and knots so um, I'll probably now I could use neutral colors but I may now start adding in some greens because I've got a whole lot of threads 
with me as well. I've also got pieces of doily that I um, hand dyed um, with my Derwent ink tents at home. Um, so I might look at sort of adding some of those in. I've got other little scraps of lace. I didn't bring too much away, but I brought a good variety of things. And so something like this little piece of lace starts to really look at that lichen that we were just um, looking at on the tree. So it could be fabulous to, for example, maybe nestle some of some of this and I might even only use a sort of a half piece but have it sort of yeah running along in a little little cluster along there so just creating that that texture and I, if I just cut down here then I'd actually get two pieces and possibly be able to use them in other spots and then I've got this beautiful um, yeah just hand hand dyed and again I might even just be taking sections of this and either forming little little shapes out of it and having them sort of come out of the the piece um, lots and lots of possibilities for my little rock pool pieces i could either do some thread weaving and i might do one on one piece and another on another um, piece so with this one i might do some thread weaving with this beautiful variegated um, turquoisey blue and then on my other little piece over here I've got this really interesting textured it's a, it's a synthetic but I thought that could make a really lovely little pondage down down here as well I've also got um, a Japanese silk piece and I thought just even a bit of the, the silk could be just stitched down to make the base of the pool there so there are a couple of options there um, I brought away a small selection of beads and there's also beads at the, the class but um, I'll probably start diving into some of these beads, um, particularly the green ones probably for my little forest scene but even some of the browns there I think as well and then some of the other colours I think will work for the, the sea scene. Um, but I've also got threads so I can always make my own little um, sort of yeah knots and, and things like that to add texture and at the class there's yeah sequins and other things to draw from. Um, I've also brought away some of my nice little um, buttons, some of them I've put on little cards and I thought they could be nice little gifts to have for, for folks but some of those could even be wrapped as well. I thought these ones looked like nice little sea I could almost see these with some little tufts coming out as little here yeah, sea anemones and then these are just little clear clear buttons um, but I was thinking they could be they could be fun to play with as well like some of them I do think look particularly like the sea some other things I think I want to incorporate in a couple of the pieces um, I think this is going to be great it's just a tiny little pom-pom trim um, so I could definitely see that being interspersed within within the piece um, a great way just to get kind of yeah just more more texture more interest you want to just I, well for me I just want to create pieces that I can like look at and and see different things um, in it as, as I go um, but yeah just I am having such an amazing amazing time um, other things that I'll do is yeah use some of the other laces that I've brought with me just little sections of them I think some of these could be great for the little um, sea, sea scene but again I can also do things like my own little um, Suffolk puffs or my own little um, what's the other buttons I make Yorkshire Yorkshire buttons I think not yeah not Dorset no the Yorkshire buttons these ones these little um, doily pieces could be absolutely perfect just with a tiny bit of stuffing in them let me see if I've got a little bit of stuffing to show you a little bit of stuffing with something stuck to it and so yeah they could be absolutely fabulous both in in this one but I think particularly in the little um, sea, sea scenes nestled nestled in so again I've got some more little little cracks so again I could do my blue blue stitching in there or I could ne start nestling some clumps of these these in um, Fleur encourages us to sort of think about how nature is and you often get those little clusters those little colonies of things together so often putting more than one rather than just scattering um, a single ones around 
So yeah, just having an absolute ball and just taking it really at a lovely, lovely pace. Lots of laughter, lots of chat in between. Um, I'll include a video, yeah, of my little clay pieces and you'll just hear the hubbub in the room and the laughter and the, the joy and the happiness. Like I've been in hysterics quite a few times um, today just laughing at the, yeah, the fun stories that we're sharing. It is, yeah, incredibly, incredibly nurturing. I just feel so very grateful to have had this, this opportunity to... Um, yeah, to do this particular art retreat, but it's my, my first art retreat um, that I've been able to participate in and just having this, yeah, this time to just play and explore and be nurtured. The most yummy, yummy, yummy food. We had beautiful baked potatoes today with um, bolognese and ratatouille and the incredible corn and mango salad. Oh, just, just spoiled. And then this, this slice, they call it, call it Fleur's slice. It's a jam filled um, crunchy, delicious, fudgy, yummy slice. It's amazing. So I am, I am full to the brim with with joy after quite a, a, a tricky little end to the week last week with the the kidney stone adventures. And thank you again for everyone's kind kind thoughts. Um, it's yeah, this is just filling filling my cup to the full. And I just hope that yeah, by being able to share a bit of this, obviously I don't want to share anything that's um, proprietary to Fleur. But all I would say is, if you can come come to a Fleur workshop, come to Zoe's fabulous Green Door Studios up here in um, Robertson. Zoe and Fleur are both just amazing, incredible people. Um, and yeah again it's just reaffirmed for me that the sort of yeah stitchy folks are the best folks in the world it's been just a joy to hang with Sarah and Rachel and Juju I felt like I knew them um, in part from the the videos I'd watched from them but um, and also Wynette um, from the US she is just she is a joy she she, she had us in hysterics too today um, so just it is it is a real, real, real pleasure. I think I've almost lost my voice because even though we do a lot of stitching, we do a lot of laughing and, and chatting as well. So um, I'll sign off now. Um, I won't keep you too long with these, these daily updates. Um, I think tomorrow afternoon, they're going to be heading into Bowral to a vintage store and possibly a thread store as well. So I'm not sure what time I'll do my, my video tomorrow, but I just had to show you the glorious garden and the glorious um, colors again, because it's just such a, a tranquil place out here. So I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm sending love to all of you and um, I'll speak to you soon and stay tuned at the end and I'll include the, the footage I've taken today of the waterfall um, and also of the, um, the class when I was just taking some footage of the um, air dry clay pieces which will also be integrating in. Thanks everyone, take care. I think this one's called property called Nelly, I think, well, I think Nelly Brown, but something like that, I mean, I've seen that. Yeah,